No matter how you want to live your life, no matter who you are, what your background is, how wealthy you are, how much influence you carry, if you don't publicly put your voice, image, and reputation on the line for who or what they, meaning the media and the talking heads that go along with them, want you to put yourself on the line for, they will do what they can to try and bring you down. You could be someone who was at one time soaring to the heights of a Michael Jordan, and they'll still come for you if you don't weigh in on politics and social justice. Just another group of parasites. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me once again on Out of Left Field for MRC TV. I'm Nick Kangadis. I don't know if any of you have been watching, there's not much else to do, but ESPN's documentary miniseries on the greatest basketball player of all time, Michael Jordan, and the 1990s Chicago Bulls, The Last Dance, has been pretty entertaining so far. As a former North Suburban Chicagoan who lived in that area during that time, we've heard most of these stories, but it's still kind of cool to reminisce about it. Heck, you see this warm-up shirt from those years in the series. Now, it, it doesn't matter how you feel about Jordan or the 90s Bulls, whether you love him, hate him, respect him, or have no opinion on the subject at all. You cannot deny the influence Jordan and those teams had on the 90s. Jordan was larger than life for a young kid growing up just outside the city. As an adult, you hear stories, but I can't deny that Jordan is the GOAT. Well, a part of the fifth episode of the series got into where people began trying to chip away at the aura of Jordan, specifically the 1990 North Carolina Senate race between black Democrat Harvey Gantt and quote unquote noted segregationist incumbent Republican Jesse Helms. I'm not saying to you that we wouldn't have segregated schools or largely segregated schools under a freedom of choice plan, such as I've suggested. But I will say to you that uh, that would be the choice. Because Jordan didn't publicly throw his support behind Gantt, originally being from North Carolina, the documentary sought to throw some shade at Jordan for it, also basically slighting his legacy for not getting more involved in social justice issues. Even former president and former Chicagoan Barack Obama weighed in on the subject for the documentary. I'll be honest that it, when it was reported that Michael said, you know, Republicans buy sneakers too, uh, you know, for somebody who was at that time preparing for a career in civil rights law and in public life and knowing what Jesse Helms stood for, you would have wanted to see Michael push harder on that. On the other hand, he was still trying to figure out how am I managing uh, this image that has been created around me. Um, and, and how do I live up to it? First of all, and this is just a personal aside, Obama's no real Chicagoan if he refers to shoes as sneakers. Most people in that part of the country say gym shoes, so Obama's Chicago card is revoked. And notice how Obama basically said that it wasn't necessarily Jordan's fault for not speaking out because of trying to protect the image that was created around him, as if to say Jordan had no say in how he was portrayed when it came to his image. And that's a bunch of BS, but I would expect nothing less from the former divider in chief. Anyway, the maker of the series put a response from Jordan immediately after Obama's comments, and it actually made me gain a little respect for Jordan. It's never gonna be enough for everybody, I know that, I realize that, you know, because everybody has a preconceived idea in terms of what they think I should do and what I shouldn't do. The way that I go about my life is, I set examples. And if it inspires you, great. You know, I will continue to do that. If it doesn't, then maybe I'm not the person that you should be following. I couldn't have said it better. It's like watching TV or YouTube videos. No one's making you watch them. Just like no one's making you follow or look up to Jordan. If you don't like some of the things he does, doesn't do, says or not says, you have the option to not follow or listen to that person. It's called being an adult. Kids don't care who their favorite athlete endorses politically or what issues they talk about. They just don't. That stuff is typically analyzed and scrutinized by adults who almost always ruin everything for everyone. Someone gets a little too popular with the general masses, there'll always be some adult somewhere who doesn't like it to the point where they'll either try to take them down or make money off trying to take that person down. And then a large portion of the adults who read that crap will basically believe it because it came from a reputable newspaper or online media source, essentially rendering them sheep. Everybody in the world respects Muhammad Ali. You know why? Because he stood for something. 
He stood for something even if it meant sacrificing a payday. We respect that. Ultimately, Michael Jordan may be forgotten. Muhammad Ali won't be forgotten. Now, why is that? All because Jordan once said during that time that quote unquote Republicans buy sneakers too? I don't think that statement needs to be corrected because I said it in jest, you know, on a bus with, you know, with Horace Grant and Scottie Pippen and it was, you know, thrown off the cuff. He was chastised for trying to appeal to all people and whether it was because that's how he genuinely felt or because he was trying to preserve his image so he could make more money, that's up to him. That's his choice, and it was the right one. My mother asked to do a PSA for Harvey Gantt, and I said, look, Mom, I'm not speaking out of pocket about someone I don't know, but I will send a contribution to support him, which is what I did. And it's not like Jordan doesn't appreciate the athletes that did and do still speak out, but that just wasn't him. I do commend Muhammad Ali for standing up for what he believed in, but I never thought of myself as an activist. I thought of myself as a basketball player. I wasn't a politician when I was playing my sport. You know, I was focused on my craft. Was that selfish? Probably. But that was my that was my energy. That's where my energy was. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There might be something wrong with that to people that need to make everything about politics because it serves their narrative somehow. Most of these writers and media whores never played sports on any level that mattered. That's why they write about it and others go out and do it. Once my baseball playing and coaching days were over about 10 years ago, I transitioned into another avenue of society, politics. Sports can teach you a lot of very valuable life lessons, like baseball taught me, both positive and negative, because of the politics involved behind the scenes, the people who influenced you, and the people who never spoke to you again because you were of no further use to them in sports. Let me sum it all up. Jordan was absolutely right in this case because he stuck to his guns despite pressure from outsiders. They wanted to profit and gain off his name and he said no, and he was absolutely correct for doing so. If you're good at something and you make a damn good living off that something, why would you venture off and do something that could jeopardize what you've built? Of course, there's nothing wrong with doing other things, but that's up to the individual, not people who barely know you, just looking to use who and what you are and have become. What's your take? Have you enjoyed the Last Dance series? Did Jordan bear some responsibility to speak up politically? Let me know in the comments where I occasionally respond. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and a share. Those are the two best ways to let us know that you want us to keep these videos coming. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and dunk on that notification bell so that YouTube might actually let you know when MRC TV comes out with a new video. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. For MRC TV, I'm Nick and Goddess.